take a slow homestead. I'm Carol, and the high for today is supposed to be 37 degrees. So, it's time for an inside project. And today, I'm going to show you how I make creamy, fresh tomato soup. So, let's get started. The first thing I'm going to put in the pan is actually tomato paste. And the reason why I say actually is because <laughs> the recipe does not call for this. But there it goes. The reason why I'm putting tomato paste in the soup is because I had it left over from when I made lasagna the other day. I had a great big can, well I call it a great big can, of tomato paste and I only needed half of it for the lasagna. So I saved the rest of it. And then I'm gonna add some water to this and stir it up. Because I want it to be a runnier consistency, you know, you don't wanna be eating pasty soup. <laughs> so. We'll just dilute this tomato paste. It will just add volume to the soup. And I might add a little bit more um, spices and herbs than the recipe calls for because of this. Now this is the pureed tomatoes from my garden that ripened upstairs on my table this fall. So I'm adding this pureed fresh tomatoes uh, sauce. I was just going to use the sauce for the tomato base for this soup, but then when I saw that container of tomato paste, I thought, you know, I can add that in also with some water and just extend the soup by using the paste also. But this is the sauce of the fresh tomatoes. So I'll stir that in a little bit. The next thing I'm going to add are the last of the tomatoes that ripened. These are my little tomatoes that I was telling you about in the previous video. And then also I took care of the celery tops that were on my kitchen table, if you remember that. And somehow I missed one little dried celery leaf. So I'm going to crunch that up and add that to the soup also. So I will prepare those. I also have these four small onions that I'm going to put in the soup. As you probably noticed, I only ended up with two tomatoes out of those. I let them go too long without using them, and so the other ones went bad. So that's what you get when you wait too long. Let's add these to the soup. Now I'll add the onions. The recipe calls for one cup of chopped celery. This is some celery from my garden that I froze in this package this year. Just, let's see, 
the end of October. So it hasn't been in the freezer too long, but I need it. So I'm just going to put this celery in here. I took it out of the freezer and let it thaw a little bit on the counter, but it's still super cold. So just so you know, I didn't leave it on the counter too long. <laughs> I could have put it in, in the frozen state, but I didn't. Okay, so I'm gonna stir in the celery, the onions, those two small red tomatoes, and then of course we've got the tomato sauce, fresh tomato sauce in here that I made the other day, and the tomato paste. Now I'm going to take this celery top leaf and crunch it up. Throw the stem away. The recipe does not call for celery leaves, but I decided to put some in because I have them and the recipe does call for celery, so this will just enhance the flavor of the soup in general to add these leaves. Okay, let's take them over. The recipe calls for one tablespoon of dried parsley flakes. So. There's the parsley, and one cup of chicken broth. So there's a teaspoon of the dry chicken bouillon that you add one cup water to, so there's the water, so that equals one cup of broth. And stir that in. Now, right here I have the celery leaves that I showed you the other day that I was crunching up and putting into this recycled uh, barbecue sauce container. So save your barbecue sauce containers for your celery leaves. And I'm just gonna sprinkle a few more in there just because I wanted to use my new <laughs> my new celery flake container. Okay, so I used that. Stir this up, and now bring this to a boil, and then simmer it for about a half an hour. So, gotta do that. So I'm gonna turn it on to high, and then watch over it. When it starts to boil, I will turn it down to a simmer, and we will set the timer for 30 minutes and then we'll go from there. Okay, it's been 30 minutes and the next thing I'm going to do is blend it up and then return it to the pot. I'm just going to do two cups at a time to begin with here. Now I'm going to strain it. Like the only thing that was left were some of those strings from the celery. You know, I wouldn't mind leaving the celery whole, but then it kind of defeats the purpose of having the creamy, the creaminess of the soup. And since it's called creamy tomato soup, <laughs> I thought, well, I will throw away those celery strings um, after I strain it. 
so maybe I'll blend it a little bit longer for the next two cups. I think I will. Let's see how this one does. That was much better. I only ended up with very small amount of celery strings in that one. I'm going to add a little bit of water. The main reason is to rinse this blender. So I didn't end up with hardly anything left in the strainer this time. So that's good. It's all in the soup. Now I'm going to return it to the pot. I'm going to add three tablespoons of butter. It calls for two tablespoons of brown sugar, and that is one eighth of a cup. And I'm going to add an extra tablespoon of brown sugar because of the tomato paste that I put in there. It calls for two teaspoons of salt. I'm going to go ahead and put in the full two teaspoons. Normally I use less, but I don't know if there was salt in the tomato paste. Pepper to taste. I don't really care for pepper that much, so that's enough. I'm going to stir this up a little bit. I have it back on number one. I'm going to turn it up to four on my stove. And I'm just going to stir this around until that butter melts. The butter has melted and the last ingredient is two cups of half and half. I prefer to use milk. So this is milk, not half and half. Stir it up. And there is your fresh, creamy, I think it's actually creamy fresh tomato soup. I'll show you the recipe. I will get it right up here if you want to. <laughs> if you want to copy it down. Now I'm going to turn the burner off and dish me up a bowl of this. Since I had a late breakfast, I don't need a lot of this right now. Just a taste. Well, two ladles. A little more than a taste. Wow, that is really good. Mm-hmm. Yep. I want you to remember that if you have different things in your fridge that you think you need to use up, make some soup and try it in your soup. Sometimes I just make what you got soup. Whatever's in your fridge. Put it in the soup. So on this recipe, you saw me improvise with the tomato paste, with the celery leaves, milk instead of half and half, 
I added a little bit more brown sugar. So it didn't seem to make any difference. Mm -hmm. It's always this good. The problem I had with the celery not blending up the first time um, was that I needed to blend it longer. The thing is, when I've made this soup before, I normally don't have celery because, you know, you buy a thing of celery at the store and then it goes bad before you use it, the rest of it up. So when I've made this soup before, I have used um, celery seeds to give it the celery flavor. At least I think it did. But this time I actually used celery, so I didn't realize you had to blend it longer. So anyway, I just want you to know that even though it may have seemed like the first time I ever made this recipe, it isn't. I've made it before. There's another tomato soup recipe that our family has made for a long time, and it is really good too. And it's simpler than this, not as many herbs and spices to add. It's just basically a bottle of your bottled tomatoes, your canned tomatoes, and then you strain out this, you blend it, strain out the seeds, then you add in to that tomato puree, you add in soda. And I don't know why, but that's what the recipe calls for, like a teaspoon of soda. And then you add milk to it, about the same amount of milk as you have tomato puree. So half tomato, half milk. And then you add butter, salt, pepper. And that's the old family recipe. This recipe has a few more things, the onions, the celery. They're both really good. I want you to remember that even if you take it slow, you can accomplish a lot. And my next project is going to be making some taco meat, you know, because every once in a while I need to have things in my fridge that are ready to grab and ready to put, throw in the microwave and be done with it. And then I go back outside to play. But it's a cold day, so this is the time when I make up a bunch of stuff, put it in the freezer for days when I can go outside and play. Thanks for joining me as I made this version of the tomato soup. Thanks for watching.